जब दिल से आवाज निकले तो उस आवाज को सुनिए महसूस कीजिए और खुश रहिए दस एग्जैक्टली वॉट यू मीन वेरी गुड वेरी गुड एंड ऑल दैट टू स्टार्ट विथ समथिंग अमेजिंग वेल वेलकम टू वेलनेस थ्री सिक्सटी एट होम ब्रॉट यू बाय आई सी एस ए लुम्बार्ड समथिंग दैट वी ऑल वॉन्ट टू लर्न समथिंग दैट वी ऑल शुड लर्न and that is all by the means of lock up under lockdown this is all about learning and being informative and gaining something more towards wellness every single step in our last episode it was a laughter riot where we saw such amazing thing by one person dr madan kataria who taught us how to laugh and we laughed along and every day we are practicing that such that we are happy if you're not doing that you should be starting to do that right away because laughter is the way out so that was the last episode but here yeah, welcome again to the episode number 2 of wellness 360 at home brought to you by icsc lombard so who is with us today well somebody who is the finest in everything she does who is she nutritionist to stars like Deepika Padukone, Sonam Kapoor, Ranbir Kapoor, Shahid Kapoor. She is also a celebrity dietitian to date and transformed the bodies and the lives of thousands of people around the world. Her best-selling book released in the year 2012 called Eat and Delete has been translated into Hindi, Bengali, Gujarati and Marathi. In the year 2017, she launched her second book called Eat Delete Junior, a book on child nutrition, and now launched N for Nourish, a children's book aimed at teaching kids about nutrition. She's also had having her own TV show called the Pooja Makida Show on the Food Food Channel, her own radio show on Magic FM, and has a regular column in the Times of India. She's also an entrepreneur. she has her own online and her own line of healthy snacks called as nourishable we are very delighted to welcome in our second episode of wellness 360 at home the one and only the very popular pooja makija thank you thank you so much mithin for the warm welcome and the warm words of introduction pooja makija welcome to the wellness 360 at home and just to one thing you know what along with all that i spoke about uh, you what is the most amazing part is that you're also a mother of two adorable girls and a very important role you're playing right now so it's such a delightful thing that you must be going through totally completely um to be able of course um as a mother i don't think there's any other definition that we would like ourselves to be introduced with, without so yes i'm a very very proud mom of two adorable girls who are um not any not little anymore they are they're big girls now and uh, all is good okay so we can't wait to learn so much today in the next 30 minutes cuz our viewers are live with us the show is live and that be so much learning ahead so yes let the wellness 360 at home begin with the one and only pooja makija now well welcome everyone uh, everyone who's here who is watching the the live uh, with us uh, i think it's a great initiative taken by icici lombard uh, to bring wellness into all your homes so i guess the title of uh, wellness 360 is uh, clearly a very apt uh, title to give because uh, at times where we are currently i don't think anything can be more important than the fact that eating right has never been more important than it is currently right so um at times where we are finally uh, it realization has hit us all that our uh, how important our health is and the fact that the virus or the the times where we are in the covid virus sees no boundaries it sees no demarcation of gender of nationality of religion of caste of height of uh, of celebrity status rich poor the only one thing that is keeping us apart from those who need medical intervention versus those who don't 
is your body's innate immunity. It has been clearly seen in studies that have been done on over the one and a half million people that have been affected with COVID that 80% of people who do get COVID stay asymptomatic or do not require medical intervention. Now, it's, that's a large percentage of people that we're looking at. 80% people will not burden the already burdened medical system. And those 80% people are clearly those people who are being able to have their body's defense mechanisms stronger than the others. So today's session is going to be all about how we can keep you in that 80% of complete wellness where your body has the strength and ability to use food as your internal kitchen toolbox pharmacy where you are going to use what is available in your kitchen to be able to rev up your immune system to have you mentally and physically uh, attuned to being locked inside your homes. Now, we have to realize that this lockdown uh, is something that works on us. It works on us emotionally, physically, mentally, and how we are going to be able to break free from this. How is it that, see, none of us want to be locked in, right? None of us want to not be able to achieve uh, perhaps the work targets or the socialization targets or so many other things that we had actually decided we are going to finish before the first quarter of 2020, right? We all had... We all had a lot of to-do lists that we had to finish, but we do not like the fact that we have been locked in. But according to me, if we learn how to eat right in this period of lock-in, at least we will leave that period with something positive that came out of being locked inside your house because you learned how to control and get health back into your lives. Okay, how you can become the boss of your lives and no doctor, no urologist, no cardiologist, diabetologist or nutritionist or a coronavirus can affect you or your lives are responsibility of other doctors. Let's learn how to use this period to nurture our bodies with good food, with good eating habits that start from here. It's not a diet. I'm not going to give you guys a diet. I'm not going to say my plan is the best plan to follow or you should only follow uh, X diet and avoid X diet. What I'm going to teach you is how to make your own diet, how to be the boss of your own food, to be able to understand your body, not only in the terms of good health, but also in good looks, because how you how you feel is how you look. So if you want to lose weight or be healthier or have better skin or have better energy levels or better uh, stamina or lesser PMS or lesser, lesser perimenopause symptoms or aches and pains and arthritis, everything begins from the food we eat. Everything starts from one simple action of hand to mouth, which is what I'm going to teach you how to do it with thought and how we can work about all of this, of course, to make sure that our health in times of COVID is within our hands. So first, let me start by giving you all five very important nutrients that all of us must be focusing in COVID times. Okay, uh, I know it sounds like a ironic uh, or, a, or a weird thing to say, but it, these are called the COVID times. And I think uh, to be abreast with them and uh, to be able to equip ourselves with the information is what we require because fear is what is going to is a deadly cocktail. We don't want to be fearing the disease. We don't want to fear anything. What we need is education as a tool to have more education and therefore disperse the fear, right? So um, um, starting with the first nutrient that I want to discuss, and that is proteins. Proteins are inherently your body's innate soldiers, soldiers that keep your fort uh, and your body strong. Uh, proteins are something that is a very done over in abundance with when you are in the West. But when we follow an Indian vegetarian diet, proteins are something that kind of go lax in most of our eating habits. Uh, in a vegetarian diet, proteins are only found in your pulses, legumes, dals, sprouts, soya bean, a little bit in milk and milk products and nuts. And, uh, nuts. Um, so therefore, focusing on protein is very, very crucial because if I don't have the raw material to form the innate soldiers, I can't have a heightened sense of immunity. So proteins at your three main meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner must be done with thought, whether it is having 
a besan ka chila for breakfast or if you do eat egg whites they could be great source of breakfast or if you're eating like for example an idli with sambar which is also your uh, um a protein you want to do a bowl of sprouted poha so you do sprouts with poha that is also your protein uh having meals lunch and dinner having some amount of dals at all meals is a very important thing and i would insist that you not only do it for yourselves but also for your parents at home we are aware that they are at a higher risk category because as we are growing older our immunity becomes weaker and if you have other comorbidities for example diabetes blood pressure cardiovascular disease this innately reduces your immune response and therefore keeps you more vulnerable to the virus so therefore keeping good quality of proteins is going to keep your fort very very strong moving on to the next nutrient which is vitamin b12 again why i address them in this order is because vitamin b12 is only found predominantly non vegetarian food so if we are of a community of more vegetarians and vegans we aren't getting enough b12 b12 is not only important for your nerve health for your energy levels for your stamina but most essentially it is crucial for your immune system the t and b cells which are the fighter cells in our body are directly proportional to the methi cobal which is the b12 which is got from our diet it is a vitamin that cannot be made by the body guys so it has to be provided by the diet and if you are having a vegetarian diet sadly there are no nutritional sources by which you can do that which is the reason why making sure that you are having enough amount of protein is what is going to give you a the nutrition to form the tb cells and then the b12 which is going to give the activity to the tb cells to be active t and b cells not tb t and b cells to be active to have your immune system completely guarded and fortified if you guys are vegetarian and you all have not had any b12 supplements for the last 6 months i recommend a dose of about 1000 mg of b12 1000 micrograms of b12 to be taken by all adults on a daily basis for the next 2 months 1000 a uh, micrograms of b12 to be taken on a daily basis by all adults i am not recommending this for children i'm giving you adult doses uh if you have not taken oral b12 i suggest for the next two months take that amount because it's very very important uh after b12 we are moving on to the next vitamin which is vitamin d3 now vitamin d3 was initially only a uh, thought to be very important for our bone strength and therefore giving us good strong bones and no aches and pains and no knee pain but the more and more research is showing us it is clearly telling us that vitamin d is proportional to innate immunity and your susceptibility to the common cold so the uh, the corona virus is a flu which is similar to the uh, rono virus rono virus is the common cold and flu that we are taking okay so if so there was a study done which was published in the journal of medicine which showed that those who have low vitamin d levels are more susceptible to common cold and flu and taking low dose vitamin d prevented them from falling sick in terms of the viral attack so therefore more researchers currently who are doing a a bit by bit match to match of what because we we do not have that much data or we do not have subjects to be able to study what is the effect of nutritional deficiencies on the corona virus so we are extrapolating data from other correlated uh, viruses to say okay let's step up the vitamin d level so that we will put more percentage of the people in that 80% see it's very clear that those 80% people who are not re requiring medical intervention or are surviving the virus without any symptoms are people who have good nutritional status and do not have com health complications that will make them the susceptible target so vitamin d is one of them however vitamin d is a fat soluble vitamin i will not recommend that you take large doses without doing blood investigations at the moment doing blood investigations is not very easy so i am going to recommend a low dose vitamin d for all of you who are listening in as part of the icici lombard initiative of 360 degree of wellness at home is to take 2000 iu of vitamin d on a daily basis for the next 2 months 
2000 IU, not the high doses of 60,000 international units, which is when you have done blood test. If you have not done blood test, please stick to the 2000 IU. You can give this to all adults in your house, especially your parents and grandparents, because they, their innate immunity is more important for us to protect and to safeguard. Uh, so we've done two uh, white, uh, we've done proteins, we've done B12, we've done vitamin D. Let's move on to vitamin C. We all are aware there is a very strong link between vitamin C and common cold and flu. Uh, vitamin C and collagen formation. Collagen formation is equivalent to mucus, form uh, mucus formation, which forms the mucus lining in your mouth as well as your nose, as well as your throat. And this mucus lining is the first barrier to stop the virus from entering from our nasooral route. You are aware the virus enters through this route. So if you have greater mucus and collagen from formation, the virus gets trapped here, is killed in here and is pushed out of our body and does not enter our body to require an immune response. So vitamin C is extremely uh, easily available in our foods. Uh, avla, uh, peru, uh, lemons, these are all great sources of vitamin C. However, being in a lockdown, sometimes availability of these vegetables and fruits is becoming a little difficult to get our hands on, which is why I'm recommending taking an oral supplementation. Please do note, guys, that I am not saying we cannot get nutrition from food. I am just, we are at the moment saying we are using nutrition as therapeutic. We are not using nutrition for sustenance. We are using uh, nutrition for survival of the fittest, which is why I'm recommending vitamin supplementation. I am not ruling out the fact that you need to eat good food, but this vitamins helps enhance our immunity to a jumped up extent, which is why uh, taking oral supplementation of vitamin C can also do, can help us vastly. I would suggest anywhere between 1000 to even 2000 uh, milligrams of vitamin C to be taken on a daily basis. This only helps us rev up our immunity and keep our fort stronger. The last vitamin that comes in this category is vitamin is zinc. Now, zinc is a cofactor which is required for about 180 enzymatic reactions in our body, including those which are required for innate immunity. More and more research is telling us that it is the zinc that when it goes intracellular with the help of the anti-malaria drug, which is why we are using the hydrochlorone, right, which is the anti-malaria drug, it takes the zinc and transports it inside the cell. It is the zinc inside the cell that is stopping the RNA replication of the coronavirus and therefore killing the virus and nipping the problem in the bud. So zinc is a very crucial vitamin. It is available in our nuts and seeds and green vegetables and our grains as well. But like I said, we are talking about therapeutic doses. So I say I suggest anywhere between 20 to 30 grams milligrams. I'm sorry, 20 to 30 milligrams of vitamin of zinc to be taken by adults. It is available in various uh, uh, vitamin doses. If you are looking at a multivitamin, which will allow you all of this, then it is uh, multivitamins don't come with these doses, my dear, which is why you will have to take them separately. So please do take them separately. Um, 20 to 30 milligrams of zinc. It is available in various uh, vitamin supplements. You'll have to check the therapeutic name with the availability of the region that you are in, right? So, please, I have I, I, I'm not there. Okay. Um, so, um, so please do take white uh, zinc uh, as well. Uh, zinc is uh, crucial to keep your immunity factor up. Now, having said uh, zinc, we are moving on to one uh, very crucial. I've, I, I said we're going to be talking about five. So we've spoken about protein, B12, uh, vitamin D, uh, zinc, and last and most important is water. Uh, most of us are sitting at home. We are not. Uh, hydrating ourselves enough, maybe because we are sitting in air condition or we are uh, more passively sedentary and we are not realizing the importance and the distinguishing between thirst and hunger. Most of us are very happily binge eating all the foods that are tasting good on our tongue and I will come to that as the next part of the talk. But uh, water is a very crucial a nutrient which is required for heightened immunity uh, for muscular responses, cramps, your skin, your bowel movements, your energy levels, your moods. So water is very, very crucial. I would suggest we every time the clock strikes 12, drink one glass of water, drink half a glass of water. 
or use technology set reminders every 60 to 90 minutes to consume at least 200 ml of water that way you will match your target of anywhere between 2 and a half to 3 liters of water to be consumed on a daily basis water is very very crucial guys and most of us do not give enough importance to this nutrient this nutrient is considered to have no calories it's considered to have uh, no nutrition no taste so therefore it is ignored please don't do that so that's a great thing to do um so please make sure that you're drinking ample amount of water so those were the five nutrients i want you all to focus on after the five nutrients i'm going to come to four habits which can be life saving which can keep us with our heightened guard which can use this wellness 360 at home as an effective tool to be able to take care of ourselves and our loved ones okay all that i'm telling you is applicable to everyone you love please feel free to give this information around to everyone uh, that you care about this is in terms of nutrition this can only and only do you good see please remember we are all in a lockdown because we want to flatten the curve of the virus but if we are sitting in a lockdown and we curve the flat of our body and our body curves then we are completely defeating the purpose so the most important uh, the most important habit that i want you to first pay attention to is eat food with thought okay uh, yes these are times where there is stress there is binge eating there is comfort eating you want to distract yourself there's boredom eating uh, it's uh, or kuch hai nahi so let's do a little bit of fancy cooking everyone seems to have become master chefs at home everyone wants to bake everyone wants to try their hand to keep themselves busy i'm not saying don't do it i'm not saying that if you have to bake you have to bake enough for the whole um, building you can bake small amounts to try taste uh, to spread the love but you don't have to spread the sugar calories because sugar increases inflammation covid virus bothers us because it, it increases the inflammation in our body and causes a cytokine storm in our body so all foods that are going to increase inflammation in our body is already making you at higher risk to have the covid uh, cytokine storm so sugar is something we have to be very cautious and careful about don't overdo uh, the oil and the sugar because those are things that are going to pull you down and of course those are things that are going to curve the flat and although you may be locked in and may protect yourself from the virus but if you're going to gain 4 5 7 kilos in the lockdown then when you step out you may not Uh, of course you will attract the virus as well but you are attracting other metabolic disorders like blood pressure diabetes uh, arthritis cardiovascular disease and that is not what we want to do in this lockdown right the lockdown is not our choice but taking care of our health is our choice leaving the lockdown healthier stronger mentally and physically can only be done when our food is given a little bit more importance so the first habit that i want you to focus on is to eat with thought right i'm not saying never eat something wrong but what i believe in is following an 80 20 rule 80% of the time eat what your body requires in terms of proteins water a balanced diet eating home food uh, we have no choice there right we are not we are not eating binge eating chinese or we are not ordering in so we are anyways eating at home so 80% of the time if we are eating our fruits and vegetables our healthy food our dals pulses legumes a balanced diet our indian thali is the best guys we don't have to look left and right to west and east our indian thalis are the best if we control the sugar and the fat and eat balanced 80% of the times then a little bit of badmashi of what your loved ones baked for you or what your daughter or wife baked for you is fine today i was consulting with a client and he told me puja everything is fine but every day my daughter is baking so every day in the night i'm eating one big fat bowl of whatever she's baked but if you're going to if you're going to wash out the good of everything you're doing during the day by doing what you're doing wrong then it's really not going to help the cause right so that's what we have to we have to say i'm not saying never eat it but eat it in small quantity so an 80 20 rule is what works best um the second habit that i want you all to focus on is exercise 
Now, exercise is not something I want you all to leave your homes, run out, go running on this, running in your building or uh, running, running to a gym, or you should have all your gym, gym equipment or treadmills at home. We don't really need large spaces, even if our room is so small, even if we have just enough space to stand while we are watching TV, just stand up instead of watching TV, sitting down, stand up. Just do a little bit of spot walking. You have one hour of Netflix, one hour of spot walking, physical activity is done. Now, when I say exercise or do some form of physical activity, it helps us not on one count of weight loss or maintenance of weight. It helps you there. It releases happy hormones and endorphins, which calm the cortisol of stress and being locked in and the ambiguity of tomorrow and economy and crashes and salaries and paychecks and dues and EMIs. Yes, everyone has them. But if we are going to be able to release that kind of stress from our mind, we are also helping our immunity. See, we have to remember that we are going to beat this damn virus. Okay. But if we are going to be stronger here, we're going to come out of it stronger. Otherwise, if we are not stronger here, the virus is going to take us over whether it actually physically attacked us or mentally, mentally derailed us. So if you exercise, you are going to have your, your wits by your end, your energy, your focus. Everything is going to be controlled. It's going to cause exhaustion, to cause good sleep, which is going to be the next habit I'm going to talk about. But exercise helps you on many fronts of weight maintenance, of, uh, uh, of immunity, of mental uh, balance and equilibrium. So exercise has many, many win-win reasons. I am not asking you to huff, puff and pant. It could be simple squats, jumping jacks. Every trainer, every person is showing us home videos. If you just Google home workout videos, you will find so many. But find the motivation to do it. And I would suggest make it a family affair. Uh, let's let six to seven every evening be a time where the family stands together. Either you play a little game of a catch catch or you just move around. You do some or everyone does spot jogging. Everyone does a few jumping jacks. It can be a fun activity that leaves a lot of happy memories and keeps you strong. Moving on to habit number. Sorry, I'm losing track of numbers, but the next habit is sleep. Now, sleep is extremely crucial for your immunity. There was a study done where uh, people were divided into two groups. One was sleep deprived. When I say sleep deprived, I say anywhere lesser than seven hours of continuous sleep for an adult. And then there were those who had adequate sleep. Both of them were given a vaccine for the common cold and flu. Those who were sleep deprived from lesser antibodies to prevent the vaccine from being successful versus those who had adequate sleep had greater production of antibodies and therefore greater protection against the common cold and flu. Sleep has a direct correlate to your uh, immunity. Sleep has a direct correlate to mental well-being, wear and tear, repair, because that is the only time our body can do it. The more we stick to regular timings of sleep, the better we are helping our body. This kind of principle that we are all following of everyone staying awake late in the night, binge watching TV shows, waking up late next morning is not the way to go. The more we follow the circadian rhythm of light and dark and the earlier we get into bed and the earlier we wake up, like we wake up when we have clinic and office and school, the stronger you're going to be mentally as well as physically. So please try to maintain regular sleep and wake up timings. Please clock seven to eight hours of continuous deep sleep. What most people are doing is sleeping very late in the night sometimes waking up early in the morning and then taking long afternoon naps to cover up for the sleep. That is not the same thing as seven continuous hours of sleep. I strongly urge you to even recommend this to all the children in the house. They are also having disruptive sleep uh, cycles. For them, not only will it cause disruption in immunity, it will also cause disruption in growth. Our growth hormones are released only at stipulated hours in the body and if they are not sleeping at those hours they are not going to grow not going to grow physically they are not going to grow mentally so therefore please be very strict with the children about sleep and wake up timings because it is crucial to keep them safe 
it is crucial to keep them strong and it is crucial for their growth so sleep is a very important factor i just cannot if i had half hour i would have done an entire session only on sleep because it is so important to keep ourselves balanced mentally physically emotionally if you do not get enough sleep you will be more cranky irritable you will think the whole world is coming to an end versus when you have slept you will be more positive you will look at this approach uh, and this lockdown with a different set of eyes and will try to make the most of it versus get sucked in and become upset angry depressed and let anxiety attack you so sleep is extremely crucial and the last uh that takes me to the last habit that i want you all to uh, focus on which is being positive now uh, yes sleep has a direct so everything that i speak usually has a connect good eating habits will lead to good exercise will lead to good sleep and with good sleep with good water will lead to stronger immunity and lastly when all of this is done well the approach and the outlook to this forced period has to be one which is positive okay yes there are a lot of negatives but we only have to be uh, counting our blessings in terms of having the privilege of having a home uh, to be comfortable under the fact that we have availability of electricity food internet uh, to keep ourselves communicating to keep ourselves educated to keep ourselves within the wellness periscope of health we are fortunate so what i strongly practice and recommend is keeping a small gratitude journal it could be any small book which you can label all the days of the week and you put in every date and every day write two to three things that you are thankful for whether it was a, whether it was a wellness session you attended by icici lombard or whether it was a hug that you sent to your to your loved ones over and over a video call or the fact that you got eggs this morning or your bhindi was available it could be small happy things but please please learn to look at more at this situation more positively or ye choti choti aadat hai i would suggest please recommend this to your children as well write down three things today that you thought you were fortunate about because the idea is the more we throw into the universe that this is we're going to come out of this happy and positive that's the way we are actually going to take care of it and that's the way we are actually going to evolve with it so uh, writing a gratitude journal is a very easy simple thing to do uh, it's a practice that we can do it very very easily so let's just let's just keep the focus on that so that we are able to bring we are able to come out of this uh, happier stronger and more positive with that i think uh, i open the forum to answering any queries and questions that you may have about food and nutrition because i think this needs to be interactive and i need to help you on a personal level as well so mithin i must say that was one of the most amazing session and thank you so much for giving us so much insight about how one should take care of their body which is very important how to draw and increase your immunity and most importantly how to be happy so thank you so much again and as you were talking there a bunch of questions already coming in so if you're ready with the questions i am going to shoot at you okay the first question coming to you uh, by pavan jain who says he's 58 year old and uh, he is a pure vegetarian and he is not taking any dinner since last year only taking a cup of hot milk before sleep please advise him healthy diet at night uh, he uh in the night without fuel so um, i just put coolant in the engine but i don't bother to put petrol in the car but i continue to drive it your body is a relentlessly working uh machine it works for you 24/7 even when you're sleeping skipping meals is not a great idea because skipping meals is skipping nutrition a chance and a reason to nurture this body with what it requires uh your dinner could be a meal that is smaller than your lunch 
I'm not saying it has to be as big as your lunch because your physical activity in the night is much lesser. So you're more than welcome to have a lighter dinner, but please do not skip your dinner. It is a chance that you're missing to uh, to uh, to uh, to nurture yourself, to nourish yourself. So please do not do that. Uh, a cup of warm milk is perfect. My husband does that two hours post dinner and one hour pre bedtime. Wo bhi le lo. Uh, you could add a little bit of haldi in it because that's a great antiseptic, antiviral, antibacterial, antimicrobial. The curcumin in haldi is the best herb that we have in our kitchen to fight this war. So if you want to hot water, gargle with it in the mornings. You want to have a turmeric latte, as they call it in America. Uh, as, as at bedtime, you want to use liberally in our dals and sabzis, which which in any case our Indian thali promotes. Uh, please feel free to use this. What I do with turmeric is I take fresh turmeric, fresh haldi, uh, fresh nimbu, and fresh pepper. Ke pon, uh, not fresh pepper, just pepper balls. I chop the haldi, the ginger, and the entire nimbu with the skin, and I and I put pepper balls in it and keep this uh, like a pickle to make. For 10-15 days, once it becomes a little fermented, I use a teaspoon of this and eat this on a daily basis with both my meals, so that I get a rush of curcumin. My kids have to have it, my in-laws have to have it, my husband has to have it. They all make faces, but they all have to have it at all lunch and dinner because that's the strong way to keep ourselves strong. Absolutely, that answers a lot many questions on our list. Our next question to you, uh, Pooja, is. Uh, uh, by Rohit Sharma, who is asking you a question about how, Rohit Singh rather that how can somebody increase the stamina and what diet should they plan? So stamina is a direct equivalent to good nutrition. So there is. I wish I had one secret to say. Subah ko ulte latak ke ek chamaj dud pi lena to aapki stamina bard jayegi. But sadly, there are no shortcuts in life to get anything, no shortcuts to get good skin or to get stamina. It is directly equivalent to how well you're taking care of your body. So uh, just like saying, I want my car to give a good average. Can you suggest one tip? Usme koi ek tip nahi hai. You have to take care of the car as a whole. You have to make sure that the engine has oil, the air and the tires, the coolant, blah, 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 blah. So same way when you're taking care of your diet, it has to be well balanced. You should be eating protein in all meals. You should not be skipping meals. You should be drinking ample amount of water. You should be getting good sleep. There has to be gradual buildup of stamina with gradual exercise, good breathing. So there are a lot of things, Rohit, I wish I had one answer to give you. But becoming aware that your body requires food for nutrition. I want you all to please, all of you highlight on this, that every bite that you're putting into your mouth is information. It is information whether I want good skin, good hair, good energy, good stamina, uh, greater immunity, no disease, no pain, or it is information to give you diabetes, inflammation, hair loss, pigmentation, PCOD. Every bite is information. So eat with thought. Eat that you are nurturing yourselves. Eat that you are the boss. And no nutritionist or doctor should ever be ruling your life. And automatically you will gain everything that you want. Because if you give your body what you want, Good hair, good skin, good energy, good stamina, and the rest. Thank you so much again, Pooja. There's one common question that's coming throughout our uh, QA, and that is how do somebody uh, who's a vegetarian can increase the B12 in their body? Uh, sadly, only by oral supplementation or by injections. B12, like I said, is only found predominantly in animal khana. So I cannot tell you. Please go eat chicken and mutton and egg whites because that's not what you're going to do. Milk and milk products will have a little bit of B12 because it is animal food. But it's not enough to keep your immunity and energy up. So sadly, for vegetarians taking oral supplementation, like I suggested, 1000 micrograms on a daily basis for the next two months is a good way to fill up the bank. Then once everything becomes easier, do a blood test, speak to your GP or your nutritionist and for for my clients, all my vegetarian clients, I usually suggest a cycle of B12 in a year to take. So uh, check that with your doctor. Your doctor will teach you how to do it. 
सो दो एक मंथ लेने का दो मंथ गैप फिर एक मंथ लेने का दो मंथ गैप सो डॉक्टर विल बी एबल टू टीच यू बट एज अ वेजिटेरियन यू मस्ट बी अवेयर के बी ट्वेल्व आपको ओरली लेना पड़ेगा that's true by the means of capsules or injections altered months that's the way it goes i'm doing one so i know about it uh, we have one more question with a very interesting question pooja that how is that europeans who are all about non veg and they are falling more for covid 19 than usual indians and this question is coming to us by uh, somebody called kaushik mukherjee uh that uh, Uh, you're trying to say that the uh, caucasians are more susceptible to the covid virus as compared to asians that's true uh i don't know whether that there is a correlate there scientifically but what i would um uh, there the virus reached their countries uh, quicker than it reached us uh but anyone whose innate immunity is weakened or when you have other comorbidities or obesity or blood pressure of diabetes uh you are more likely to be victimized by covid uh, i don't think it is seeing any barriers in terms of nationality or religion or epidemiology it is only seeing the strength and the innate uh, st- uh, body immunity in terms of uh, immunity as well as in terms of comorbidities so they have they have said that people who are overweight are x times more likely to be affected by the virus people who have diabetes are more likely to be affected by the virus according to me i don't think there's a demarcation in epidemiology but there is more in terms of your health status so all that matters is how healthy you can keep yourself that much stronger you're going to keep your body there was some talk about a bcg vaccine that we have received uh, in our infancy which could be acting as a protective mechanism which is protecting us uh, versus those countries where bcg was not given as children but that is just a theory uh, it could be possible it's helping us but i may take bcg but if i am not taking other th- uh, preventive methods to take care of myself in terms of sleep water immunity and nutrition i'm still going to be as susceptible as someone who has not taken the bcg that's true that's completely true it's a theory and one should believe it or not believe it uh, we have one more question by uh, n balasubramanian whether a diabetic person can take honey uh, in general i do not like sugar added sugar in any form whether it is sugar honey gourd demamra sugar maple sugar coconut sugar date sugar these are all different ways to make us buddhu sugar is sugar and it is empty calories it's giving you no nutrition it is increasing inflammation increasing disease increasing aging and weakening your immune system so i do not believe in added sugar in for anybody uh, so clearly for a diabetic it's an absolute no no a big no no there one more question from anil varshni who's asking he is suffering through cough for about a month now what should he do to get rid of this consult a doctor maybe isn't the true answer oh uh, yes you definitely should but maybe taking a little bit of haldi like i said early morning haldi water gargles uh, at the moment it is summer otherwise i would have told you gargle and drink the haldi because it will uh, work as an antiseptic as well inside as well but right now maybe you could gargle and drink half of the water and gargle and spit out the first the remaining half also if the cough hasn't gone for a month this is called as chronic cough and usually chronic cough is related to acidity i would check factors because of regurgitation of the gastric acid it is causing a recurrent uh, uh, pressure on your throat which is causing a cough uh, cross out all the uh, reasons why you could be having acidity which could be large gaps and therefore eating large meals too much alcohol too little water poor sleep those are all reasons for acidity please do not believe in just popping an antacid it is a not a very safe drug to keep taking people take antacids like it's gems but that a dependency on antacids is not a good idea correct your diet uh, i wish i could give you more tips but with paucity of time i don't know how many tips i can give you but taking care of uh, acidity is very easy with a good diet break up your meals eat often 
um, control your caffeine. There are tons that you need to do, but I would control your acidity and I'm sure your cough will go away. Thank you so much. I think we'll take two more questions, Pooja. Uh, one question for all the vegetarians because they are the ones who are asking too many questions regarding the B12 and much more. I'm very one... happy to answer their questions because they, if they don't address these issues, they are the lot that is weaker and more susceptible. So I'm definitely very happy to help them. Yes, just make sure the ones who are watching us like that you make sure you make a note of all the tips that Pooja is giving us. It's really important. You follow them and trust me, once you start following, you will see a better result in coming days. Okay, quickly, two more questions I'm going to take, uh, Pooja. One again is about how uh, to control weight while being at home all time and by being a vegetarian. Question uh, I by... Think I think I've answered that in the whole talk. So if you're going to have... Um, like I said, 80% 80 80 of the time you're eating right, 20% a little bit of badmashi. You're keeping at least 40 to 50 active minutes every day. You are uh, sleeping well. You're drinking enough water. So you're distinguishing between hunger and thirst. Uh, and if you're a vegetarian, you're taking oral supplementations because B12 is important. Vitamin Zinc is important. And good proteins are important. I think if you follow all the five uh, nutrients that I asked you to focus on and the four uh, habits that I asked you to do, you will get better health, you will lose weight, you will have better skin, you will have greater immunity, you will be happier in your uh, mind as well as in your body. Thank you so much, Pooja. One last question that we'll take. I see so many of them questioning, but let me pick the best question, which I think is well suited for people to know. And that question is, can we all eat chicken during this time of COVID-19 or egg? Yes or no in the current scenario? Question so, by Swami Benji. So at the moment, uh, we have been given no reason to avoid uh, the, the virus is not affecting the animals. And if you are cooking your food, whether it is vegetarian or non-vegetarian, the virus is very heat sensitive. So it deactivates its RNA and kills it. So any food that is cooked, whether it is vegetarian or non-vegetarian, is safe for consumption. So I would not say that you have to avoid eating any type of food. The only food that you should be careful and cautious about is raw food. I'm so glad, Pooja, you made that point about that you can eat chicken and egg because while you cook it, while you heat it or while you boil it, it kills all that is there and it's quite suitable for your health to eat it. Thank you so much, Pooja Makija, for joining us here at the Wellness 360 at home and brought to you by ICS and Lombard. This one quick question that I want to ask you. Uh, I, I drink honey water with lemon every morning. I start my day with beetroot every single day with an orange. Uh, I make sure I meditate for half an hour a day. I work out for one hour. Is that a good way to start the day? It's a great way to start the day. Uh, the only thing I would change within is the warm water with lemon. I do okay. not think, I don't think that's the best thing to do to your body. So according to a lot of sciences, warm water with lemon is the leacher of calcium from your bones. So it is not something I recommend to anybody to do. So honey, I do not like. All of us are sweet enough and all of us are getting enough sugar from the food we eat. So I do not believe in any added sugar that also on a daily basis. Uh, but warm water with lemon is the best way to get bone related aches and pains. So if I were you, I would stop that immediately. So that would be my first personal advice to you and to everyone else who's listening in, in this 360 degree live of wellness from home, I'm sorry, uh, is to do not do warm water with lemon. It causes uh, leaching of calcium from your bones and therefore bone related aches and pains over a period of time. So stop that. Other than that, I think you're doing well, Mithin, so keep it up. Thank you so much, Pooja. Trust me, you just answered something very amazing because I've been doing this for the last three years and I'm like, there's something really wrong with it. So glad I questioned you. Thank you so much for joining us at Wellness 360 at home. It was great and our viewers loved it. And uh, all I can say is thank you so much and uh, namaskar from the whole of ICS and Lombard for joining us here. Thank, thank you for you inviting very. us. Thank you, everyone. Take care, be safe, be home and be very, very positive. That's important. That's right. Be positive. Thank you so much. That was Pooja Makija giving us a complete insight about how one should take care of the body, the family members and much more. 
whether you're vegetarian or a non-vegetarian, make sure you plan what you eat throughout the day. And once you start planning that and you know about your intakes, you can always control majority of the problems that happens as you become older so yes that was a very interesting session on wellness you know what to eat now what intake should be there the protein the zinc and much more so make sure you're immune as immune you can be be the best version of who you are because all we are trying to do here at the wellness 360 at home is make you the best you are thank you again in case you you have any feedback or suggestion please go on to our facebook page do a hashtag wellness 360 at home tag icsa lombard and we'll be more than happy to answer to all your questions and suggestions my name is Mithin Upadhyay. you can also follow me on instagram and thank you so much for joining us we'll see you in the next episode meanwhile be happy be healthy keep smiling keep laughing and we will see you very soon thank you for joining us